when I created this family, they were not the Jungs. That's right, we did not intentionally start out with Rodney Jung as, <laughs> oh boy, one of the founders of my core three families. Instead, we had Nellie Thompson and her husband, Louie Thompson. However, literally in the very first episode we ever released of gameplay for this challenge, Louie died tragically in a house fire, and I honestly never quite recovered from it. Um, so Nellie unfortunately gets really close to death, and I decide to cheat a little bit to up her hunger, but it turns out she was pregnant, and I only cheated just enough to keep her from dying. I didn't actually cheat all the way to keep her from um, miscarrying. So unfortunately, Nellie does lose her baby in the fire quite tragically and is forced to figure out who to marry next. It's not necessarily, of course, that Nellie needs a husband in this era, but more so that life would be easier for her. She runs a vineyard by herself and Rodney Jung and I think this is Gordon end up kind of fighting over Nellie. However, Nellie does sort of choose to go with Rodney Jung, which is a bit of an interesting choice and I have received some flack for it because let's be real, it's Rodney Jung. But Rodney essentially refuses all attempts to propose to him and so we have to bed him to even get him to agree to anything romantic. It turns out that Nellie is actually pregnant and it turns out that was all we really needed to get Rodney to actually agree to marry Nellie. So thankfully he finally says yes after several, several failed attempts and we can have him help us start up the home business. At the moment they really only sell some fruits and produce like um, celery and lettuce, but before long Nellie gives birth to her very first baby. Well, you know, after her miscarriage, <laughs> tragically. I'm just happy she actually had the baby this time. So we're naming him Edward Tobias. However, I become convinced that his name is Edmund for the rest of the challenge. So Edward will from now on be referred to as Edmund. Sorry, apparently I can't read. <laughs> Time flies by and Edmund ages up. I think I actually do end up renaming him because my game, you know, got corrupted and I had to rebuild the entire neighborhood. And so his name does become formally Edmund. And Nellie is pregnant with her second child at this point. So we have an heir at the very least. The home produce stand is going well. It seems like everyone in this town pretty much runs a produce stand, but that's okay. So Edmund brings home Emma Price from school, and this is kind of the start of a really sweet romance between these two. They start off as childhood friends though. Nellie gives birth to her second baby, and this is Mary. Mary is one of my favorite sims in the challenge, which is really exciting to me. And lo and behold, they go for another baby as well. Mary ages up into a toddler and is absolutely adorable, even though we're missing her um, eye set in this game. But that's neither here nor there, and we will deal with that later, <laughs> like four generations later. Thank you, Shadow. <laughs> So everyone in town is buying produce from them, and we are finally able to actually get Nellie a nice kitchen. And we have our third and fourth baby with twins. It's at this point that I realize something is tragically wrong with my geneticized skin tones, and they are reverse geneticized. So we have Jonah born and his twin sister Edith. And we're finally able to actually have a proper harvest of the grapes, and so we begin stomping to essentially start producing wine, which is really, really exciting. Mary ages up into a child. I am actually kind of obsessed with her at this point, and it's the same day that her brother Edmund ages up into a teen. So we have a lot of really exciting things happening with the Jungs, despite their kind of tragic start. And we make Edmund a proper family sim, and look, little Edith and Jonah have aged up too, and I think Edith is absolutely adorable. 
Edmund's not exactly happy with his teenage makeover, but that's that's fine. And here's little Mary. Oh, the braids. I'm still not over it. I'm really still not over it. I don't know why I'm so obsessed. And then we've got Jonah here. Jonah, he becomes such an icon. These two start trying again for more babies and we actually have our first barrels of wine that we are um, aging. Unfortunately, Edith doesn't actually make it past toddlerhood, which is really unfortunate because I think she is adorable and I really wanted to marry her off. Edmund and Emma, as they're both teenagers now, have had a really steady friendship their entire lives but they start to realize as teens that maybe it's not just, you know, their friendship. Maybe it's something more. And they actually share their first kiss together, which is really, really sweet. Jonah ages up into a child and thinks his appearance is absolutely comical. And Nellie gives birth to another baby, another set of twins. So we have Bertram. Gosh, I forgot they were twins. We have Bertram and Olivier, who I accidentally named Olivier instead of Oliver because Again, I can spell. And unfortunately, Olivier doesn't actually make it past toddlerhood either. Oh, you're rolling around? My baby just rolled. Oh, I'm so proud of her. So we send the family off to St. Philip's Parish and Mary and Edmund are not exactly getting along at all. And it's actually time for her to age up as well. So Mary becomes a teen in the midst of a lot of hardship for this family and so i think we make her a knowledge sim which feels appropriate for her look at her she's gorgeous and she discovers a real love and passion for the piano um, she feels the most free and happy when she is playing and so sometimes she actually just to get a little quiet goes to st philip's parish to play the piano there however one day when she's there playing the piano she runs into the parson's son this is arthur westerfield and they don't exactly get along at all all at first he you know kind of insults her piano playing and mary has a bit of an ego and so that does not go well in the slightest however arthur does see her you know outside mourning a grave and decides to offer her a little comfort a little solace in just hanging out with her it's a proper mary shelley moment as they sit for hours next to her siblings graves and you know what? I'm absolutely about it. I love these two. So they end up with a pretty decent relationship by the end of it, despite their hard time at the beginning. Emma and Edmund actually end up getting married after being essentially childhood sweethearts for their entire lives. It's really sweet. This is one of the first vignettes that we do, and I really love these two together. I thought there was nothing more appropriate than giving them a vignette. And they do a proper cake smash, which is just so cute. Like, oh my gosh. And so we give them a little bit of a wedding bedchamber above the winery shop. They just enjoy a little bit of time together and look how much wine we actually have. All right, it's time for Birdie to age up. We've been calling Bertram Birdie, so um, you'll hear me say both. But he ages up, he looks so much like Mary and lo and behold, it's also time for Jonah to age up into 18. So Jonah ages up into one of the most chaotic sims we have in this entire neighborhood and it is Oh, it is a time. So it's midnight and Mary sneaks out to uh, go to St. Philip's Parish again, but she's not sneaking out alone to St. Philip's Parish. Arthur Westerfield is also meeting her there. So they go from mere acquaintances to, well, a little something more in the midst of the graveyard <laughs> and then have this really uncomfortable moment. Well, uncomfortable for me <laughs> as I film them making out in the pews in the back of the church. <laughs> it just seems a little wild, but you know what? To each their own. And so this begins a bit of a romantic rendezvous that keeps happening at night in the church. So she sneaks out to meet Arthur 
all the time and ends up just going to bed when everyone else is waking up to begin their day at the winery. Emma is giving birth to her first baby. It's so, so exciting. And well, it was exciting at first. And we do end up having a healthy baby. This is Peter. Peter is the next heir, the generation three heir to the Jung household. However, Peter is the only one that survives this birth, unfortunately, and Emma rolls to die in childbirth. So we do lose Emma, which I felt so bad for doing because she was really the love of Edmund's life at this point. I mean, they had been together since they were kids. It just feels, it feels a little awful of me to do this to them. Edmund really struggles with Emma's death and ends up fighting a lot of his siblings. He and Jonah really are not getting along in the slightest, which, I mean, to be fair, doesn't surprise me because uh, Jonah, I think, will get into a fight with anyone at this rate. And we do have a funeral service at the church. Edmund is trying to lean into fatherhood as best he can. Mary, in the midst of a lot of the tragedy, ends up sneaking out to a completely new church in town. This is St. Anthony's Parish. And this church is closer to the downtown area, or well, what we have of it, because there's not a whole lot. <laughs> and ends up eloping with Arthur Westerfield in, of course, the graveyard, because what else is more appropriate for these two? So they're both teens. They eloped essentially without taking much money and all they can really afford is to rent a small two-room apartment. Harvest season is upon us once more, and this time we actually have our own vineyard. And it's beautiful. I absolutely love this vineyard. And they have, as you can see, a ton of wine. I mean, a ton. They're doing great. This is a new place in town that we can have celebrations and stuff. Jonah is helping out a lot with Peter. He doesn't get along with Edmund, but it's still his family, you know, and that's important. Nellie is really doing the brunt of the raising of Peter, however, um, just because Edmund is struggling. Like, he's trying to lead into fatherhood, but... It, it's, it's hard. It's hard without Emma. And so Nellie is really taking over that role. It's also time for Edmund to age up into an adult. And we actually have a new family member in town. So this is Lee Bao. And she comes from, uh, from China. And she is one of, I think, Rodney's niece. She is coming to stay with them just to kind of help out around the house, help out with the vineyard. And she and Edmund actually end up kind of hitting it off. They become really fast friends and she's helping out a ton around the house. And so everyone seems pretty happy to have Lee there. It's now time for Bertie to age up into a teenager. Ah, gosh, I love Bertie. He's just like, he's so sweet and so gentle and such a good Sim at this point. And so here he is, he's aging up into a teen. And again, I think he looks a lot like Rodney, but also a lot like Mary, which is really interesting. And soon enough, it's time for little Peter to age up into a child. I feel like time just flew by in some of these earlier rotations, but at the very least, there was a lot of hard work going into this house. He looks so much like Emma, which just tragically breaks my heart, but it's okay. Before long, it's time for the very first Harvest Festival. So we have everyone um, that's really mostly in the lower to lower middle class. Uh, come over to celebrate. We do have um, a Holloway and a Harvey here, and they're not exactly lower class, so I don't know why they're here, but they're here. So uh, that's, I believe, Clement? Or is it Lawrence? I don't remember his name. But he and Victoria Holloway and um, Lee, unfortunately, is getting a lot of attention by Clement, which she feels very uncomfortable about. However, she and Edmund actually kind of confess their feelings towards each other, 
which I think surprised both of them because Edmund honestly thought he was never going to love again. And it's really hard to blame him. Meanwhile, at the corner townhouse on May Maybell Street, we check in with Mary and her family. So they're really struggling to even make rent. This is their daughter, Priscilla, and Mary is essentially trying to do the very best she can by tending to their small, modest garden. She's also participating in the cottage industry at this point and is doing a lot of laundry. She makes around 60 simoleons a day max, but they owe 800 simoleons a week for rent and they really cannot make that happen. So her husband, Arthur, works at the pottery factory, which is really rad infested and you know puts him at risk of illness constantly but he makes about 35 simoleons a day here so they're really struggling lee falls in love with edmund finally and you know before it was just a bit of a crush but she's really feeling accepted by the community at the very least which is really nice and Edmund actually ends up proposing to her. I went back and forth as to whether or not I wanted Edmund to remarry but he was so so young when Emma died it just really felt like he would remarry and it was totally normal for people to remarry quite often in this era. Nellie ages up into an elder and it makes me so so sentimental. Oh I love I, I love Nellie. She's amazing and in St. Philip's Gardens, Edmund and Lee actually get married. It's a very private ceremony. You know, Edmund's done the nice wedding before. He just wanted something really with the two of them. And we take a couple pictures and, oh gosh, they're just, they're so happy. They're so, so happy. And for Edmund, of all people, to have not one but two love matches over his life, really quite phenomenal. So we get them on their way to having their first baby and it happens pretty quickly for them. Lee's very fertile and so we've got our first baby. This is Faye, a girl, and Peter is still going to be the heir also. Um, so whatever boy they have won't be the heir. Peter is still the heir. So Peter is aging up into a teenager and here he is Peter, Peter becomes a bit of an interesting sim, but we'll get, we'll get back to that in a little bit later. So Faye ages up into a toddler and she's absolutely adorable. I think she looks so much like both of her parents and I absolutely love her. Summer is well on its way. However, Mary is still really, really struggling. Her daughter Priscilla is now a teenager and she and Mary are not getting along very well which is hard to see but it is what it is they also have a couple more children um i believe her name is jane i don't actually remember because she ends up dying at some point so i didn't get to play with her very often as you can see priscilla is essentially fist fighting with her father which is an interesting move although I don't think Arthur knows how to handle this. He was not prepared for the junk chaos that he ends up with. This little boy is Hugh. He is sleeping, yes, on a dog bed, but it's fine. So Priscilla ends up actually uh, running away with a man and Mary, who did this, you know, as a teenager, didn't want that same life for her daughter. Mary is well aware that life in poverty is hard it's very hard and so she ends up marrying eventually this is aldridge westcott and has her first baby this is i think samuel samuel is adorable i actually really love priscilla's kids and then she has a second son this is ira so she unfortunately dies in childbirth with ira and leaves her husband Aldridge alone with two boys and an entire mining company that he lives on. Back at the main household, we have an unfortunate visitor and steals things from the bedchambers from... Oh 
gosh, this it's it's hard to have Lee and Edmund sleep in this room with all of the memories that it has with um, Edmund and Emma, but it's fine. So after her daughter kind of runs away and Mary realizes what she did to her family in running away, she actually reconnects with her family. Jonah and Bertie, of course, have some complicated feelings about that, but Nellie is just happy to have her back, and she really doesn't mind. Faye has aged up into a child. She looks quite cute. I um, get rid of the bangs at this point, but yeah, she's adorable. So Mary and Bertie have, have it out. Um, Bertie has a lot of feelings about the fact that Mary essentially abandoned them in a time of hardship for the family, and... Lo and behold, it is another birthday. Oh, look at this little kid. Look at him. So, so cute. So Bertie is aging up into a an adult. And here he is. I love Bertie. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, Bertie. What, what a good kid. And at the same time, it's also Rodney's time to pass away from old age. However, he does not exactly go willingly. So Nellie has now outlived two husbands. Bertie takes his inheritance and is able to buy a really sweet cottage um, where he will eventually start an apothecary business. It's absolutely adorable. I think he did such a great job decorating it and ends up meeting a neighbor from Alfreda Isle. This is Della O'Neilly. And they actually really hit it off and she helps out with some chores around the house, but it does end up a little bit more. So he falls sick to the tuberculosis outbreak we have in town and Della is really tending to his side pretty much the entire time that he's sick. It's time for another birthday. Here he is. Oh my God, I forgot his name. I will put his name in a caption, um, sorry. <laughs> And it's also time we get rid of some of the vines, the wine, like the grapevines, um, because we've moved them to the vineyard lot and redid the household. Bertie and Mary are still fighting. Oh, his name was Aldous. That's what his name was. So Bertie and Mary are still fighting. It is not a good situation. And the fact that neither of them even lives here and yet comes home to the main household to fight is really something else. It turns out that Lee is pregnant again, however, she does not end up going through with the pregnancy, unfortunately. It does end in a spontaneous miscarriage, so that is pretty unfortunate. We have a new family in town, this is the Averys, and they are probably one of the most wealthy families in town, um, rivaling, of course, the Kings and the Holloways. I thought it would be fun to have 30 sims on a single lot having a party, all of course with autonomy, very, very maxed out. And Faye ends up meeting, this is Cedric Cunningham, he's the town painter. Peter also meets Lydia Holloway, she's one of the poorer Holloways, and they actually hit it off really, really well. But yeah, that's why that's why this entire event was lagging so much because I really pushed it to the max. Although I will say I haven't tested out the uh, the limit with my new computer, so we gotta have a big event next. Peter and Lydia end up dancing as well as Faye and Cedric, and Faye ends up kind of developing a little bit of a girlish crush on Cedric. They're really cute together. However, Cedric is part of the intellectual salon in town, and so he's not exactly inclined to properly court anyone because he is living a little bit of a wild life. He has a really quaint little townhouse. Um, he can't afford much on a painter's salary, but he lives nonetheless a pretty lavish lifestyle. So it's time for Peter to age up into an adult, which is honestly really hard for me to imagine. But at the very same time that he ages up, it's Nellie's time to die of old age too. Again, she's not ready to go. I think Nellie is a little bit worried about the relationships that are going to transpire between all of her children in her absence. And gosh, poor Edmund. 
Oh, I feel so bad for Edmund. He's just, he's really been through the ringer at this point. But, oh, so here's Peter. I think he actually aged up into a pretty dashing sim. And so they're properly middle class at this point. Poor Birdie is really struggling with his mom's death. I think Birdie is kind of losing it a bit, honestly. But the entire family and then some, you know, we see Philippa here and Lydia Holloway's here as well and Hugh. They, even Mary, Mary came. Um, they all come to, you know, celebrate Nellie's life. And Peter's really happy to see Lydia. He wasn't expecting her to actually come and so he goes and calls on her the next day or well once their morning period is over <coughs> oh tell me and just thanks her for coming to the funeral meanwhile birdie and della have been steadily embracing their newfound friendship and they end up uh, checking out st. Catherine's Cathedral together this is the new cathedral in town and Della is very Catholic, and so she's very excited for this new cathedral. And Bertie really doesn't care about religious boundaries. He is, of course, Protestant, but Bertie's not that religious. Um, the Jungs really have not been a very religious family in general. And so he does propose to Della, and they're going to get married. <laughs> Oh, Annie has a lot of thoughts on this next event. So I move um, Jonah out and he gets married. Oh, he gets married and has triplet girls. And so I sent him out into this flower field, which I immediately regret because he gets hit by a satellite. Literally not even 10 sim minutes on this lot. It is horrible. He leaves his poor widow Winnie alone with her triplets. Um, I think I said daughters, but there's one boy and two girls. So back at Mary's house, she ends up taking Samuel and Ira in to live with her just because Aldridge is really struggling. <laughs> However, we end up with another tragic fire and almost lose Mary in the fight? Actually, I think we do lose Mary. So we lose Mary and we also lose Ira and Samuel and one of Mary's other sons. <sighs> so Grim, of course, comes. We've lost almost every Sim on this entire lot, except for Hugh Patrick. Hugh survives and inherits the entire house, which isn't much. Um, so yeah, it's great. Peter develops a little bit of a gambling problem. Yeah, he does. And ends up losing about 7,000 simoleons to the Averys, which was Aldous's inheritance. Um, so that's not good in the slightest. So it is time for Aldous to age up into an adult, which otherwise would have been really exciting. However, given the fact that he has no inheritance, well, not great. But before we do that, we're going to celebrate with a little church festival. This is the St. Philip's um, Festival, and it is a hopefully going to be seasonal church festival. So you can see that everyone is really having a good time. We've got a Ferris wheel, we've got a merry-go-round, and Peter is really excited to actually see Lydia here. So Peter and Lydia have been courting for a little while now, and Peter decides it's finally time to make things a little more concrete. So he proposes, of course Lydia says yes, and back at the main household, we've got a lot of fun things happening. So Lee is aging up into an elder, which makes me really sentimental, but oh, it's fine. So Lee is not the only one aging up into an elder because Edmund is also aging up into an elder. Unfortunately, Edmund doesn't age up particularly well. I think he has had enough trauma in his life that he's not particularly happy about everything. Peter 
and Lydia do get married at St. Catherine's Cathedral. The game glitches out and I don't get a new recording of it, um, but just trust me that it happened. It was very small. To celebrate the wedding, we have Cedric paint a portrait for them. Here it is. I think it actually turned out really well. Dear Lydia is pregnant, and this is actually her second pregnancy, and things are going really well at the main house. This is Lydia and Peter's first son, Willard, and Willard's little sibling was also born. His name is Matthew Horace. So we've got an heir and a spare already, which is really, really wonderful. And Aldous ages up into an adult. And I think he actually looks very dashing. I'm pretty pleased with how he turns out. Although Aldous is, you know, not doing particularly well. I think he's looking at, you know, the things that he can afford for a house and really struggling because he is only moving out with 2,000 simoleons, so he doesn't exactly know where his next house is going to be. He doesn't know how much he's going to be able to afford because it is not much. Now, back at Bertie's household, they are baptizing their daughter, Iona Faith. So that is really wonderful because that's our first baptism we're actually having in the game since Della, of course, is Catholic. And it's also Iona's birthday into a toddler. So we just decide to do all of that kind of at once. So here's Iona. She looks so much like her mom. We have some more babies being born for Lydia. We have Charles and Evelyn. Charles unfortunately does not make it. Given all of the toddler deaths, it was, you know, it was time to go to the graveyard and have a little bit of mourning. Cedric calls on Faye and he hasn't done this very often, but he does gift her an easel. I think he kind of mistakes her interest in him as interest in the finer arts. Whereas Faye does not really care about the finer arts, she's just interested in Cedric. So it is time for little Evelyn to age up into a toddler. She's adorable, she's such a good mix of both of her parents. And it is also time for Faye to age up into an adult. So here she is, I think I gave her a pretty sensible little outfit. And she'll be moving out fairly shortly, but for the time being, that'll happen a bit later. I did want to let you guys know that Cornelius was um, mayor. I did forget to mention that in the previous recap, but Cornelius is mayor, and we've, of course, got the main people in the town council here. And Bertie is not part of the town council, but he is being investigated for the fire that occurred at Mary's house because he was witnessed um, stealing their newspaper as the fire went on. So Hugh Patrick, this is Mary's only surviving son, is um, very convinced that Bertie is at fault here. It's also time for another harvest festival. So this is our second one. And Peter, of course, spends most of the time pouring himself and drinking some wine. Um, I think he's, you know, getting a little bit toasted, but that's what Peter does to deal with the fact that he has witnessed quite a lot of death, you know? So everyone is dancing at the Harvest Festival. We've got Brooke back there and Cedric dances with Faye. And, you know, Faye, poor Faye, she would just... She would marry this man in an instant, but he has no inclination to marry. Can you let go of my hair? Thank you. But nonetheless, he's absolutely leading her on. I mean, he's spending so, so much time at the Harvest Festival with her. And so Faye's absolutely convinced that he's going to be calling on her formally at some point. And he, this man has no idea what he's doing. And so it's time for Evelyn to age up into a child. Here she goes. Oh, I love Evelyn. And, oh, don't grab that. And it's time for another baby to age up as well. So Faye moves out. It is finally time. She spends her inheritance 
instead of as a dowry, to establish a little school for all of the local Chinese students. And that's basically at the moment just the Jungs. So Aldous's little cottage is pretty much one room. It's very, very small. This man has no money. <laughs> but he does end up meeting Justine Fenner. And Justine is a neighbor. She is, of course, from Alfreda Isle. She's also a sim self. And she is absolutely smitten with him, which is kind of shocking considering how little money Aldous has. But Justine is not in it for the money. She's in it for love. And she and Aldous are a really well-suited match. They get along so well, and so when Aldous proposes to marry her at the Hartley Waters, she of course agrees very readily. And it's at sunset too, which is so nice. But we decide just to have a very small wedding in their backyard. We haven't planted the herb garden and produce garden yet, so that's pretty much where everyone is sitting. Um, and we've got a lot of really cheap chairs. Like, I think they're probably worth one simoleon or something silly like that. As it's time for Matthew Horace to age up, he actually ends up passing away. So unfortunately, we did lose Matthew. We also have a new family in town that are visiting and staying with the Jungs. Um, this is Lee's brother, Chen, and Chen's daughter, Wenling, and then his wife, Mei. They um, came completely unannounced and are now staying with the Jungs, and the household is absolutely chaotic enough as it is, but they get to work on procreating autonomously just to ruin my life, you know? And so, oh, poor Willard over here is just like, I do not understand what's happening and why this household is so full. But it is also time for Edmund to pass away. And I think he's the first one to actually pass away Permaplat. So that's actually a really, really big deal. Go Edmund. So he actually got the hula dancers and all. Of course, everyone is still really upset, even if he passed away, you know, happy. Wenling and Evelyn turn out to be really lovely friends. I am really enjoying seeing them grow up together because Evelyn is kind of in a household full of boys. So back at the church, I did decide to give Edmund this kind of nice little tomb just because he's the only one who died permaplat so far. And you know what? He earned it, right? He totally earned it. And gosh, this graveyard is getting so full. So because the Jungs aren't particularly religious, I did decide just to have Lee kind of give a little speech about his life. Unfortunately, Lee is really heartbroken. He was the love of her life and a really unexpected love at that. But time moves on and with it, other good things. Evelyn ages up into a teenager and she's gorgeous and adorable and really happy. And she becomes Annie. <laughs> Sorry, my baby is hitting the mic. And she becomes a family sim. Okay, okay, okay. She becomes a family sim. So at Faye's schoolhouse, I did want to show you all the kids we currently have there. So we've got Wenling, we've got Della's and Birdie's children, and um, the other Jung kid kids. And that's pretty much it. At the moment, the schoolhouse, you know, it isn't too full, but there are enough of them to make it worthwhile, I would say. We've got kids and teenagers. Peter and Lydia have the most fun in this house. It's wild. But amidst their fun, <laughs> I swear they're pleasure sims, um, May goes into birth and does not give birth to one or two, but three, three babies. Why she does this to me, I don't know. But oh my gosh, I was not emotionally prepared for it. At the exact same time that the three babies are born, Lee is also dying of old age because, of course, everything in this household just happens all at once. So <laughs> that's just great. She kind of glitches off and d disappears into the ether, but we do get her tombstone. And as Cornelius did step down after all of the shady stuff that went down with Daisy, he um, 
is no longer mayor and Harrison Lawson is now elected as mayor and we do actually have a whole election process that happens in town. I'll explain that a little bit more later. After being on his deathbed again, uh, poor Bertie gets sick so often, um, Della decides it's time to tell him the truth about her past. So she came to New Whitby with two children and those children were Rosabelle and Hiram. She originally said that her, their father had, you know, passed away and she was a widower, but in actuality, what happened was that she had them um, as a bit of an affair outside of marriage. Of course, Bertie doesn't care, you know? So Willard and Wenling are aging up at the same time together into teenagers. Wenling is adorable and I love her. And I'm so glad to have her despite the fact that this house probably has like 12 Sims. It is not good. And here is Willard. He looks so much like Peter. It's crazy. <sighs> yeah. Chen and May are just wild. They have no regard for social standards here. It's a good thing we're not in the upper class. But for some reason, Archibald Lawson is friends with Evelyn, and so he does come over. Now, this is the first lecture that we have in town. It was pretty normal in the 19th century to have little, little lectures on various topics and anyone could attend them. Education became a very important moment. And so uh, all of the young kids are there. I try to get as many teens and young adults as I can, but Wenling really enjoys the experience and starts talking to the mayor because she wants to, you know, attend more of these and maybe give one of the lectures in her future. She is, after all, a knowledge sim. Ida Philippa Elmstone actually comes over from school and Willard has a little bit of a crush on her as you can see, but I, I don't know how that's going to work out. I mean, the Elmstones, the Elmstones are part of the Lawson crew. Yeah, the Elmstones are part of the Lawson crew and so they are a little bit more socially elevated. Oh, oh, oh. And it's time for the triplets' birthdays. <laughs> Min and Yan uh, do age up. We have some fighting happening here. And by some, I mean actually a lot. They, I think, are struggling with the fact that the household is so big and end up just not getting along with each other because more chaos is what the house needs. Peter ages up into an elder and oh, he's so dignified. And that is where we end off with the Jung household. So next time I will see you in season two with the Jungs and hopefully less tragedy.